Hello, my name is Leah, and it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jean Houston and Dr. Steven Eisenstadt, who I have with me here today. And I can speak, I think, on behalf of myself and many others in saying that we are very excited to have you both as keynote speakers um, at the summer conference, Dream Tending for Our Times, Resilience, Emergence, and Empowerment. So for those of you learning about this for the first time, this live and interactive conference will take place on July 9th and 10th from 9 to 2, and it will truly be a special weekend where we'll journey together through time viewing special footage from some of depth psychology's most influential founders such as Joseph Campbell, Marion Woodman, and James Hillman. Uh, from there, we'll get to experience keynote presenters, Dr. Jean Houston and Dr. Steve Eisenstadt, who we have here today. And we'll end with smaller presentations from some of the mentors of the Academy of Imaginal Arts and Sciences. Um, so to hold your spot, register today at www.dreamtending.com. So Dr. Houston, I had the privilege of seeing you present both at Pacifica Graduate Institute and at the Evolution of Psychotherapy on one of the big stages. And I'm very excited uh, to hear about some of your uh, newer work. Can you speak a little bit about what uh, you're planning on discussing in your presentation, The Possible Human Emerges? Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I think what I'd like to talk about, Elia, is the need for brilliance in our time. Because it's a time when I, I truly believe that intelligence itself requires a do-over. Otherwise, I feel that we simply lack the mental, the emotional, the spiritual capacities to deal with the world and society in the throes of self-destruction. Now, the kind of brilliance that I'm speaking about uh, does not particularly have to do with the brilliance of a star or the exceptional brilliance and abilities and intelligence or ideas and creations of highly skilled and original thinking people. All that is fine, but that belongs to the expected notions of brilliance. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about something much richer by far, a kind of a kind of emergent humanity that's been hidden for most because the time of speciation was not yet ready. Now, speciation is how a new kind of plant or animal species is created out of an older mode. There's an evolution or a splitting off from the older form. And it's called in uh, biological evolution, punctuated equili equilibrium. Things go and oh, and it stays the same another thousand years, it stays the same, another 25 cells the same. Suddenly, whoom, something hugely, passionately interesting happens. Because when the scientists looked at the evolutionary fossil record, that find that an organism will stay pretty much the same for a very long period of time, at least in the fossil record. And suddenly it will jump to a whole new kind of domain of being. And often it was discovered that some kind of, well, shift in climate, shift in ecology, crowding, work to effect these jumps. And what we see in evolution is the push toward greater levels of um, first complexity, increasing diversity, organization, connectivity, and looking back at how we get there, how we got there, may provide where we are headed, you see. Now, what if it were possible? What if it were possible to access the worlds of your imagination and bring them to life as never before. Now, for many years, like 70, <laughs> I, I've been exploring the outer limits of human possibilities. 
Now bring together all these years as, well, the things I've done as philosopher, author, uh, international consultant of the United Nations and also uh, other international agencies. And what I find out that when you add to this, the mind's relationship to quantum physics, you then become a new kind of pioneer and personal and social change with immense discoveries of the mind's relationship to the whole. Now, some people call the whole God, other call it uh, the cosmos, but whatever it is, it's a different kind of relationship that quantum physics especially is bringing to the forefront. We know that when we bring local consciousness or certain domains in you of local consciousness to a higher resonance in what we might call the cosmic field or the quantum field, we access capacities that until now seem more mythic than real. So hopefully, one of the essential things that we discover is how one's mind can unite with the all-encompassing matrix, the matrix of consciousness that transcends all space-time categories. So what I've been exploring in recent years is what is the nature of the enhanced quantum self? What do you think of when I offer that term, those words, quantum self? And so one of the things that happens when there is a utilization of this higher order of mind, one learns how one's imagination can cooperate at a higher order of discovery and manifestation, no longer being caught in habits and expectations of the past, but stepping into a, an imaginal sphere where intention and imagination can be transformed into a new reality. Now, each of us is generally defined by an identity that's influenced by our life experiences, culture, relationships. What if we were actually born with a latent or hidden blueprint that is larger and more meaningful than our current understanding? I call that the lure of becoming. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do in my work is to offer revolutionary, evolutionary concepts that bring together uh, often the mystic way or the spiritual path and the implications of quantum physics so as to discover the, the pathways that are there that I believe are ready to emerge, ready to emerge in this time and space, because truly we need to redeem the time, redeem the unread vision of the higher dream that is yearning to come forth and learn how to harness these new qualities and understandings of self and cosmos that really begins to offer the next stage of human evolution. And this is beyond culture as we have known. It is not beyond spirituality, but certainly beyond culture, certainly beyond the autocracy of present notions of anthropology or notions of if, it, if, it, if, it is, if it's a form of interesting machine, it works. No, no, no. I mean, people roll their eyes if someone tells them that they have the attributes of what we call genius, that they are in fact brilliant. The fact is few people have accessed the vast universe of imagination, of creativity, of problem solving, and the confidence that these complex times require if we are not just headed towards the inevitability of ending times. Now, I've studied ending times in many, many cultures and civilizations, the history of them. Uh, look at the 14th century in Europe, 
the Black Plague, the bubonic plague, everything, the old social and religious orders breaking down. And it's followed by a renaissance, a renascita, a radical renewal. It's as if different aspects that had been coded in the psyche for growth suddenly emerged out of the chaos, the confusion, the darkness, the diseases of the previous century. And I believe that we are in a similar time now. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have found by working with emerging cultures all over the world. I, I want to introduce people to something that I call the quantum blueprint. And I believe that everyone carries such a quantum blueprint that is uh, the annunciation of the prophetic moment of the next stage that is ready to come into time and space. And we all contain it, but we seldom access it. And so I'm always interested in taking my students into a wild ride into their own original mind and helping them unpack the infinite possibilities in this exciting new field of consciousness. And we are, people are very surprised to discover that they contain higher states of functioning and insight that may have been lost to them by years of cultural, cultural conditioning and limited messaging. People can think, they can feel, they can perceive as if they were standing on a star field of possibilities. And once there, people discover how entangled they are, are with all of life and how activation can impact the networks of connection, neurological structures, ideas, social structures, circumstances in which we all belong. I mean, if we thought that genius belonged to others, then you get ready. You find yourself within the, uh, you find within yourself with the, the courage, the passion, the diligence, the joy, the creativity, the, the spiritual depth and the unimagined capacities that have always awaited one's awareness of them. Just sitting there saying, please, please look at me now. This is the next stage. And thus, with this kind of work, such as Stephen Eisenstadt does, and in my own small way I do, we find that the unimagined capacities that are now ready and are awaiting our awareness of them. And thus you leave empowered by your own unique genius, the genius of a time of transformation and believing in one's gifts and inspired to bring them to life. I was enthused about us offering our work at this conference. I have been looking forward to it for a few months. And now listening to you, I'm even more enthused. <laughs> more <laughs> enthused. You're Very much so. You're very really kind. <laughs> oh, what a time this is going to be. The work that I'll be offering just, of course it would, because you've been one of my extraordinary mentors for decades now. But I'm going to be talking about uh, imagination, the matrix of imagination, and how to access what I call the, the story web of deep imagination. And so sympathetic, empathetic, congruent with what we're, you're sharing with all of us, that incredible genius that's available at that dimension of consciousness, that quality of experience, to access that you know, web of imagination to bring it into our lives, to hear the stories that were, uh, the stories that are weaving actually through us and mm -hmm. actually hosting us in their presence. Not as much us hosting imagination, but turning the channel just a bit and allowing imagination to host us and then to access and to listen to the genius awake and animated and illuminates from this extraordinary dimension of experience. So I am looking forward to this very, very much. Very, you know, in addition to the overlay and the conceptual frame, uh, I know, Gene, that what you do so often is to offer people very particularized, uh, well, we call them exercises. They're not really exercises, but particular experiences so that you listen to the words, you attune to the offering, and then from the inside out, have a direct experience 
as it unfolds in community here and now. And I'll be doing the same. The day that follows, I'll be working with, of course, dream and imagination in ways that allow the story web of deep imagination to present itself, yeah, to, to come forward so mm -hmm. that we can have the opportunity to befriend the landscapes and the figures and the um, persons, the things that are embedded forever in imagination, which contain the lure of becoming. They do, right? Where is that lure of becoming? Where is it that we must mm, bring our perception and our awareness to hear what's being asked of us now? Not only developmentally, of course that's important in our relationships, you know, our partnerships on behalf of the planet and too, as a collective, you know, as peoples now on this planet, a shared experience. How are we going to evolve into the next evolution of what is indeed being asked? And probably, you know, certainly mind, rational thinking, that's part of it. It is, you know, everything that's come forward, our inheritance that lives into the enlightenment. But there's so much more, isn't there? There are thousands of years going forward. And those figures that are thousands of years back as well as forward, those figures asking of us now. And how do we access their intelligence? How do we really deepen our relationship to the genius waiting for us to, to, be, to embrace truly? And that's what we'll be looking at. We'll be really, you know, what we're gonna do at this conference in part is first listen in the people, Joseph Campbell, Leah, you mentioned Joseph Campbell and uh, James Hillman, Marion Woodman, some of the people that have really worked, particularly this century, last century or so, and really have brought their work forward in passionate, poetic, extraordinary ways in scholarship, in movement, in dance, in body. Uh, yes. And then, you know, from that place, Okay, here and now, here we are in the world of this day, of this time, with the challenges that we're facing. How do we access now in this matrix of imagination what's being asked of us? And then, Gene, to listen to your work, to accessing brilliance, the capacity of what the next evolution of being human will and needs to look like. I think that's going to be just quite, quite, quite. Um, now, oh, what's the word? Profound is a word, but more than that, you know, not not profound intellectually, but experientially, very mm -hmm. embodied, very uh, inside out. And then, too, uh, as Leah, you mentioned, there will be people that have been following Gene's work and my work as well. And they've now gone out into the world and applied that work into particular work settings and into art and into uh, into law into a variety of things just like jean i know has worked as she's mentioned in every sector throughout the world um, particularly work with the united nations has been nothing less than extraordinary and useful that's the most important useful constructive and so those folks that have taken the work and now are applying it in very direct ways we've invited them to come and offer their direct experience as well so I'm delighted and particularly enthused at the moment. Well, thank you both so much. We're really excited. And again, to register, go to www.dreamtending.com. Um, and we can't wait.